Let me do the proper introduction here. We want to welcome everyone. I'd like you to know we are doing this seminar for the simple reason that when God gave me the task last uh, January, he spoke to me clearly and he said, more than any other time, you are closer in history as far as my return is concerned. And he said, but there's something I would like to do with the Christians. Because what he did was gave us as much chance as he could. In actual fact, he gave me the statistics. He said, are you aware, Bobby, that over 90% of the Christians do not know the book of Revelation? That's a lot. And for some strange reason, that shouldn't be the case. Because what he said to me was, because they're being ruled by their fears, that's the term he used, the fears, that they have earned from where I don't know. He said, what has happened is the devil was enjoying keeping them in complete ignorance. What's the word again? Ignorance. So... He said, I want to put an end to this. So what's so sad at the same time is of all the books, 66 books in the Holy Scriptures, there's only one book where it says, blessed is the person who reads this and knows this by heart. Imagine that. We have to change history. And he looked at me and he said, I want you to train people in the world. Now, if it's a global thing, I know how big that is. He's not expecting me to do this all by myself, which is why I decided, okay, uh, let me form my little group first. So I spoke to Pastora Ani. This is Pastora Ani. Let's give her a big, big hand, okay? And I have spoken to Pastor uh, Aurelia. And let me explain to you why I took only the two of them. Because they just recently were ordained as ministers or as pastors. I want you to know that God would like to train them to spearhead. It doesn't matter which part of the world. But I always tell the, the people from kickoff, I said... Uh, even the motto of our church, it says right there, go ye into all the world. It didn't say stay ye. So I make it a great emphasis. This is a big difference. If your vision is worldwide, it's because God gave it to you. Because that's what the word said. So now here's the deal. Because the work is so humongous, we need a bigger group to help us fulfill this. And once I have finished up uh, downsizing the whole thing, we've done this last year, I want you to know, it's not that I deprive this church, our church, the IFGC, of the teaching of Revelation, but God, I didn't know he was watching me last year when I was doing this. And we completed it in four months. We're doing this in four days. Four Thursdays, we're going to do this the whole month of June. So each day that we are meeting, or each night, if you'd like to put it that way, we will be covering between five, maximum of six chapters per week. So what we're going to do at the same time is create an army that will Prepare themselves. It's, it, it, consider yourselves right now an army that's being prepared by God to conquer the world. What did I say? Conquer the world. And so God looked at me. In fact, I thought he was going to send me to the Philippines to meet the president and all the big wigs and whoever else is inviting us. Very attractive thing. But God told me, you're not. I already said yes at the beginning to them. 
but he spoke to me towards, if I'm not mistaken, it was not May or something, right? Uh, sometime in May or April, he spoke to me and he said, you're not going. Instead, I'm sending you to, uh, later on, of course, I'm just cutting short the whole story. He said, if you obey me in this, it wasn't easy because uh, you and your spearheading it and all of a sudden God is removing you. Not funny. So the whole thing will crumble. In fact, my sister uh, uh, honestly asked me the question, what am I going to do, Bobby? Should I cancel? I said, don't do that. He didn't say that to me. I said, you're the one who's spearheading. <laughs> Pass the book. Okay. So anyway, so what happened was I look at her and I said, uh, but he wants me removed. And God said, I have something for you if you obeyed me. So I told her and graciously she accepted it. But I knew it wasn't the easiest thing. So right after that, he spoke to me again and he said, I am opening you up. I will explode you to Latin American countries. So let's give uh, the, the honor and the glory for that, as well as the whole of Europe. So guys, I, I will let you know anyway, either way, when, I'm going, when I'm, I'll be doing all these things. But in the meantime, this is the core. When I asked God, what, how do you want me to do it? How do I start this? He looked at me and he said, begin with Sacramento. I said, that's funny. So this is why we are here today. This is the first one. So are you ready for this? Yeah? Okay. Now, Hilton Sutton, I think I explained it to some people already, but let me just explain it to you again. In fact, we are starting. Were you given this? You see the program here? Okay. On the first page, you would see today we will be covering pages 7 up to 32. That's quite a lot. I'd like you to know, okay? So uh, let me read the introduction to you. But I promise myself I will adhere to Dr. Sutton's style because God told me of all the ones that studied the book of Revelation, he was the one I soaked in this, and he painstakingly obeyed me. Thus, the book was formed. You may look at this and say, oh, it doesn't look like it's that difficult or too long to make. Look at me, 12 years of his life. God halted all his ministries. And he was a doctor in theology. He was well known and everything. But God stopped him and he said, focus on revelation. So this is his masterpiece. Uh, just letting you know that he spent 12 years of his life just creating this book that gave him as his masterpiece. And praise God, he finished it. So in great respect for his work. I adhere to what he has done. And if there's anything more that God would add to it, I let him. And in fact, this is the reason why I need you to participate physically. So that you might have questions that will add clarity to what else was missed out here. Because I believe in the Holy Spirit who is teaching us, guiding us, and leading us. He never fails. I promise you. So he's here tonight listening to this lecture. And he's the one who's going to give you the increase. Because the promotion comes from God. The increase, as the word of God says it, the increase comes from the Holy Spirit. So no man can boast. Okay? So this is what you're ready to receive. How many are ready to receive the increase of the Holy Spirit? Thank you, Jesus. Take it to heart. A lot of Christians are laxadaisically obeying God. Don't be one of them. Take this to heart. And God will seriously use you as well, wherever you go. Okay? So as a matter of introduction, for years it seemed that no one was able to unlock the book of Revelation. No one. A supposed book 
of dark sayings and mystic happenings. Even my own dad told my mom we were staunch Lutherans and we studied the word. My dad was not an ordinary dad. We were having a Bible study in our house every night for the family. And you better be there or you won't have dinner. Okay? And he was the one who told my mom, don't ever let them read the book of Revelation. It might confuse them. And I'm sure God meant well. But that's what I was saying to you. The fears that's been gripping Christians and Satan rejoicing about it. Because he knew once we unlock this, he is in great trouble in his entire history of manipulation. Let's continue. So, the scripture inspired by our Heavenly Father is given to doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, in all, it didn't say some, it says in all good works. So you would see that in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. I would like us to read it, but then we have to move on quicker. Okay, I think, how many of you read that? You read it? Um, if you haven't read it, will you please review it in the house? Pay attention, please, pay attention, because this will not be repeated to you again. This is, we are only going to cover this once, and that's it, okay? No scripture is to be carnally, I mean to say, using your flesh, discerned or privately interpreted. Today, we depend upon the same Holy Spirit who is inspired, okay? Who inspired the scriptures to give us understanding. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we claim this. We stand on this. We believe this, thus we have spoken unto you. And pray this from the bottom of our hearts. Be the teacher tonight, Holy Ghost, we pray. Teach our hearts, teach our minds. Let it implode inside of us that we may explode outside to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. God wants us to understand revelation, full stop. He himself chose the title which means that which is revealed or made clearly visible. Isn't that funny? My dad would say it might confuse them. And here is God's word saying, that it be will become clear to them. The title alone was given away already. Made clearly visible. God gave us this book to complete the New Testament picture of Jesus Christ. Which aids us in our Christian experience. Which you will find in chapters 1, 2, and 3. Speak directly to daily Christian living. More than any other time of history, Christian history, this is the most critical one. Because when I ask God, why is it that you did not give this to me? Why did you not tell me to teach the Californians that the book of Revelation when I came here? And he spoke to me and he said, because it is not the right time. How many believe in that? When it's not the right time. I said, what do you mean it's not the right time? I think the word of God is very, you know, any time. God said, no. I'm talking about the impact, Bobby. Had I given it to them 10 years ago, the impact you're going to create today will be different from then. Because I needed the pandemic to happen. So they will take it seriously more. But check it out. History would tell you it has never happened. The whole world was halted for more than one year. The whole world. And now we're saying, oh my gosh, what stage is this? And God looked at me and said, there you go. Now it's time for you to come in. Look at your neighbor and say, we better come in. This is going to come in, okay? 
So we will just uh, remind each other that it's such a vital thing right now. This history. As you study the book of Revelation, use the manual. Use this manual, which is your syllabus. The Revelation teaching and syllabus. Examine a scripture reference and then read the corresponding explanation in the syllabus. Prepare yourself to receive the blessing promised to those who heed the words of revelation. I'll give you a perfect example, guys. If I would say the word, like we have seven churches, I would even ask some Christians alive today without looking at the thing. I know you already read it. But can you imagine if you haven't read this book of Revelation? How many Christians now like, can you tell me the seven churches? By heart. There you go. Just giving an example. And guess what? Today, as we speak, the churches around the world of Jesus Christ is classified under seven categories. Seven different types of, church, types of churches. We are. You're going to read that for yourself and discover that. <coughs> so, the Word of God says, Prepare yourself to receive the blessing promised to those who heed words, the words of revelation. Blessed is he who readeth. Let's read this together. Blessed is he who readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Look at me first. What's the meaning of the word prophecy? Look at your neighbor and say, it's something that hasn't happened yet. That's why it's called prophetic. Okay? But it's going to happen. And keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. When I analyzed this, I said, oh, my Lord. This was written 2,000 years ago. If God would say the time is at hand then, how much more at hand it is now? Does that make sense to you, church? Mm. And yet, Jesus is saying to me, remember the parable of the ten virgins? I said, yeah. So he said, Bobby, take note of that. How many were prepared? Only five. And God looked at me and said, guess how many Christians today are prepared? Out of the five. He looked at me and said, not even one. Now you see how alarming that is? And you're going to discover why they're not prepared. My parents used to say to me when I was a kid, Ignorance of the law does not excuse. It's not an excuse. Okay? Jesus is referred to 55 times in 22 chapters. Angels are referred to 55 times as well in 22 chapters. The Holy Spirit is referred to 14 times in Revelation. A person's works are pointed out 10 times in different times. There are 10 proofs of pre-tribulation rapture within Re Revelation. And it is clear Revelation is the book Jesus and the Father wanted taught in every church. Revelation 1.4 says that and 11 along with Revelation 22.16 which established this truth. The day of the Lord is revealed to Peter in 2 Peter 3, 10 to 13, declares the Lordship of Jesus to continue over the tribulation millennium. And the author of the book, Hebrews, reveals the groups and personalities in heaven and are described in detail in Revelation chapters 14 and, uh, sorry, 4 and 5. Now, uh, let's read a little bit about Satan's opposition. Why does he hate the book of Revelation? Let's check it out. Because he is the author of confusion and lies. Look at your neighbor right now and say, because of confusion and lies. 
which is his trade. That's his business. Now he's in trouble the moment we know this. Our adversary, the devil, has opposed this book more than all the other 65 books of the Bible. He has sown massive amounts of confusion concerning revelation within the church. Since God is not the author of confusion, which is in 1 Corinthians 14.33, all the confusion within the church community originates from Satan. Isn't that funny? Within the church? See, this is sometimes what we cannot understand. You call this church the body of Christ, and Christ is the owner of this, but there is confusion. How did that enemy come in? Good question. Because people gave him the stage. We're going to erase the stage. A major lie exists within the church community, and it is. The book of Revelation is hard to understand. That's what they're saying. But is, free? is it really true? Answer, no. A sheer lie. And yes, not so. Dr. Sutton walks you through verse by verse without number one doom. Look at your neighbor and say, no doom. Huh? No doom. Number two, no gloom. Don't have to feel sad about it, okay? And then again, another one is no confusion. And finally, or fear. Just the opposite of everything. Now, as we discuss, uh, again, discuss, discuss the chronological outline of the book, Revelation, um, you would see right there, it, you're going to be guided. And so try to move with me as fast as we can, kindly. I need my time. Uh, just give me the sign if uh, I'm using up so much, okay? Revelation 1 to 3, introduction, message to seven churches. You could see that. Uh, if you notice, after four and five, we're no longer, after the catching away of the saints, we're no longer part of that. Again, we're no longer part of it, of the tribulation. The real church of Christ is going to be taken away by Jesus Christ. He will meet us up in the air. How many are excited about that? How many are prepared? Oh, it seems like the amen is less. Okay. So, four and five, catching up of the church, seen before God's throne, identification of the 24 elders, and then Jesus receiving the book of, with seven seals. Chapter 6, opening the first uh, six seals. The first is white horse, second red horse, and they have meanings. The white horse, the Antichrist. The rider on the red horse is war, World War Three, which was also mentioned in Ezekiel 38 verse, uh, 38 and 39. And the third is the black horse, which means famine. The rider is famine. And the fourth one, pale horse, which is death, accompanied by hell. The fifth one is martyr tribulation saints. So there will be saints in the first half of the tribulation. First three and a half years. That's 50% of seven years. And then the sixth one is the upheaval of nature reserved until the end of tribulation. In chapter 7, two groups revealed, 144,000 Jewish evangelists began to minister early in tribulation's first year. And also the great multitude, mid-tribulation saints to say, caught up to God's throne. Now let's go, this is the beginning of the mid-tribulation. -tri Revelation 8 to 10, um, seventh seal, usher in seven trumpet uh, judgment. And fourth is plagues used intermittently throughout three and a half years. And then the fifth one is the first woe 
first war, demon, locusts, no death, five month duration, which is written also in Revelation 9. And now the sixth, second, uh, sixth one is second war, Eastern army destroyed at Armageddon, which is also in Revelation 9. And then the seventh one is the third war reserved until the end of Revelation. Two witnesses will have to die in Revelation 11. Israel remnant escapes to wilderness. They have to hide. Um, where was I? And then angelic ministry. You also have, by the way, I, you, I want you all to know that the, I don't want to call it God's desperate act to save people. He will even use the angels to evangelize. Hallelujah. I guess it's a practical thing to do, isn't it? Because you cannot kill the angels. Revelation 14, because by this time, the enemy is getting more and more ferocious, and he's allowed. 144,000 finish ministry and appear with Christ. No further reference in this story. Revelation 15 to 16, seven plagues occur during the four year or four days of tribulation inside to Armageddon. You will see that in all the passages that's written across it. Harlot of these chapters is ident oh, sorry, chapters identifies the world religious system. Who is the harlot? The religious system. At this stage, okay? So Christ returns to his saints on Revelation 19. Again, Christ returns with his saints, and then the battle of Armageddon, and then the Antichrist and false prophet cast into the lake of fire. For 1,000 years in Revelation 20, uh, there will be this rain peaceful reign of Jesus Christ. No wonder it was mentioned about Jesus that the government shall be upon his shoulders. And by this time, guys, look at me. This is when the lions will be having siesta with the lamb, see, without being threatened, that the lions will eat them. Okay? This is when all the lions and everything, we will no longer be afraid of them. They will become our friends. Oh, well, how could they eat us when we're already supernatural? So, saints reign as kings and priests. See? You will reign as, we will reign as kings and priests. Satan is bound for 1,000 years. Israel is totally restored. Release of Satan in Revelation 20, 7 to 10, and then the final battle with Satan. And you know what will happen if you battle against God. He couldn't win. So in Revelation 20, 11 to 15, final resurrection of wicked dead and the white throne judgment. This is when God will raise all the dead from the time of after Adam, imagine Adam, up to that present situation. That's the only time they will resurrect. So thank you, Jesus. And Revelation 21 to 22, the new Jerusalem, new heaven and new earth. That's so beautiful to read all the time. I keep reading that because that's my future place. Look at your neighbor and say, so is yours. So, the subjects, uh, chapter subjects, introduction, John's number one, John's cover letter to the seven churches of Asia, and then chapter two letters to the church of Ephesus. Don't forget the names. What are the names of the seven churches? Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos and Thyatira. That's only the four, okay? And then letters to the churches of what? Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. 
in chapter 4, John was caught up and he experiences the rapture proper order of events. And both of this I'm about to read, as well as what I've read, is the heavenly story, story begins to unfold. The scroll with seven seals, which is uh, chapter 5. Chapter 6, opening of the seals, beginning of earthly events during the tribulation. Chapter 7, 144,000 and their converts, God's intervention. And uh, chapter 8, sounding of trumpets. And then chapter 9, plague of locusts and the oriental army. You can imagine all the disastrous things being poured upon uh, the humans at that time. By the way, this is just concentrated mainly in, in uh, uh, the Middle East. Not all parts of the world will witness this. Okay? I'm not planning to ask you guys to transfer to places that will not be affected by um, revelation, but uh, the tribulation. So now, um, where did I stop? Chapter 10? 10. Okay, seven thunders, John's uh, future, and then 11, two witnesses, seventh angelic trumpet, and then 12, sun clothed woman, man, child, hidden remnant, and then seven headed, uh, seven headed beasts, which is actually the system. The Antichrist, as well as the false prophet. And the 144,000, chapter 14, caught up, angelic ministry, preview of Armageddon, and then introduction to Revelation 16 for uh, chapter 15, and then the 16, seven plagues, the last seven plagues, earthly events. And in 17, the harlot. And in 18, the harlot's obituary. And in 19, Christ returns, comma, Armageddon, and then the triumph. You know who will win at that time. You know the Ar Armageddon thing, when we discuss it later, remember I describe it to you. Can you imagine in the battlefield, the blood that's going to be spilled is up to, I thought it was the, uh, the knee of a person. I found out it was actually the knee of the horse. That's how high the blood will be spilled in the battle of Armageddon. Unbelievable. And most of them, I would imagine, are Chinese blood. Okay? Because they're oriental armies. Well, who else would produce so much people? So they presume it will be, but Russians and, you know, whoever else. Now, Christ returns in Armageddon. And then Satan bound for 1,000 years reign in chapter 20, great white throne judgment, and then the millennium. And then um, in 21, it will speak only of new heaven, new earth, new Yerushalayim. I have the privilege to go to heaven. I already told you, you know my testimony. I've been there. So when it says, that the whole of heaven is four square. You have no idea what four square is. God knows the meaning of square. And he was correct. It's in excess of a thousand floors. Imagine how high that is. But square. So when I was in heaven, I was expecting something like paradise, like mountains, prairies, and all these things. Oh, there is a lot of greeneries but surrounded by the buildings. And what, were, what will be those buildings? Look at your neighbor and say, our accommodations. That's what they are, okay? Maintained by God, hallelujah. I will have my own private place. I, I'll let you come in, okay? You can visit me. We'll visit each other. So look at your neighbor and say, is it okay to visit you? <coughs> Sorry. In Jesus' name. So where was I? New Jerusalem in 22, conclusion of John's cover letter. Keys to 
uh, study of Revelation, Revelation of Jesus Christ. Like what we said, this book is all about Jesus, all about him. And be, we should be ever learning about Jesus. Number two, revealed to Jesus' servants. The revelation of Jesus Christ was originally given only to Jesus by God Almighty. By the Father's will, Jesus chose to share this prophecy with his servants. Here we observe the holy digression in the operation. God, sp God spoke to Jesus, who spoke to an angel, who spoke to John, who wrote it for others, and particularly you and I. Okay? So it's also the believer's biblical right to understand revelation. Number three, only book in the Bible that declares blessing. How many times do I have to repeat that? But we made it clear, right? Blessed is the person. When I check the word blessed for that particular thing, because in the Bible there are many meanings when you, they say blessed. Okay? Some of the translation, sorry, meanings would say to be envied. But this one is different. Blessed means not frightened, confused, or horrified. That's the meaning of the word blessed there. Is he that readeth, and that they hear the words of this prophecy, they hear. Now, in 2 Timothy 1.7 says, Paul writes to Timothy and states, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear. This is why you shouldn't fear this. You should love this. Look at your neighbor and say, God did not give us the spirit of fear. Tell them right now, God did not give you the spirit of fear, but of power. Look at your neighbor and say, power, love, and sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, God cannot conclude this word with horror story. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4, 26, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation, and let all be done for edification. Look at me. Today, in most churches, they only have chismes when they come together problems. Now you know why church is tiring. Because it's not doing what God is asking us to do. When we see each other all the time, we should be prepared to give. For example, sister, when I see you, I'll give you songs. I'll give you exhortation. I'll give you prophecy. And, and if these things are not happening, the church is not being the church of Jesus Christ. Mark that. It should be full of love. Full of good news. Not bad news. I don't like it when Christians are doing the opposite. Because that's Satan trying to destroy us. I should get excited when I see you, Rose. Okay. When I see Pastor Rose, I should be rejoicing. He said, Rose, Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. I'll try to sing it when I have a better voice, okay? So all I'm saying to you is that's what God wants us to do. He said, let all things be done for edification. Is that what's happening? Hmm, interesting. Stop this gloom, doom, and fears inside the church. We're not supposed to be manufacturing that. Because God did not give you and I the spirit of fear, but power, love, sound mind. From now on, this is what we're going to have in the mighty name of Jesus. 
I'm not mad. I'm glad. Past, present, and future events are all mentioned in Revelation 1.9. Establishes the book as past, present, and future tenses. Traditional theology generally states after chapter 3, all events in the future. Jesus gives John a direct command to write of the past, present, and future events. Central theme of Revelation is not tribulation period or the rapture church, of the church or the, the battles or the judgment, but Jesus. Did you hear? Central emphasis is Jesus. Sus, and that's more than clear. Hallelujah. That's the plan of the Lord. To establish this story, John must draw from past to present biblical records to support the future events, which is complete God's plan. Therefore, past records of Old New Testament appear order to get, uh, in order to give credence to future events. Now, the vision of chapters tells two amazing stories and give two parallel accounts. The story of heaven, John in heavenly scene before God's throne, and then the story of earth, um, John in the earthly realm of action, and then finally six informational chapters. These are important, the informational chapters, which you will find uh, mainly in chapters 7, 10 to 15, 17 to 18, 21 to 22. Primary function of the chapter is to provide flashback, previews, or other details detailing the stories of heaven and earth. Although the chapters are in chronological order, they are often, or they often reflect the events of the past and look forward to the future. Chapter 7, 10 to 15, 17 to 18 provide additional information about personalities and events occurring either in heaven or on earth, even during the seven years of tribulation. And these chapters also link together past, present, and future times and events in majestic plan of the Almighty God. Now, the last one here is through this study, you will learn, number one, the truth you have not known. And then you will see prophetic story with chronological order. So there is no confusion. And number three, or the third one would be, you will put together the bits of knowledge already in your possession. And then also you will help others understand this majestic book. That's the role you have right now. As you learn this from me, and as I gave it to you, as God gave it to me through His Spirit, you're not going to you're going to pass it on to the whole world. Prepare yourself. Take this seriously, because you're next. You'll be the one standing here and preaching. Okay. And then number, but don't. How many are afraid of that? Well, I'm not qualified. All this. If you have the Holy Spirit, do you need any degree? No. <laughs> Only a few people answered. If you have the Holy Spirit as your teacher, do you need something bigger than that as a degree? So that's more than clear. You're qualified. And you, guaranteed, are never going to be the same. Okay? Hey, you should be clapping your hands on that one. You're not the same. You're going to be rightly dividing the word. And to be diligent to press, present yourself approved to God. Because you studied. But the rest will be added to you by the Holy Spirit. A worker who does, not, who does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Do not sow confusion by misuse of the scripture. For God is not the author of confusion. And when one takes scripture out of context... Confusion, I guarantee you, follows. Never relate a direct prophecy for Israel in relation to the church. Never. This is what other Christians are confusing it with. 
never relate prophetic statement pertaining to the church as if it were for Israel. Different thing, different dispensation, different everything. But you will wisely discern it and divide it and proclaim it. And God is helping you. When one does the above, confusion is the result, like I said to you, when people are misusing the word or misinterpreting. And finally, learn to rightly divide the word of truth. I love it when it says in John 8, 31 through 32, if you continue in my word, look at your neighbor and say, you better continue in God's word, okay? Okay, make it your source of breath, yeah? Source of life. Then you are my disciples. You stop reading and continuing the word of God, you stop being a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's what happens. And look at your neighbor and say, the warning is, look at them right now, the warning is, it's to your demise. Don't let that happen, okay? And you shall know the truth, the Word of God says. And guess what the truth is going to do for you and I? It will set us free. Hallelujah, okay? Now, are we supposed to have question and answer, or did I use up everything? Okay, after chapter 1. Okay, guys, how many are ready for chapter 1? Okay, we will officially start now.